Hello, hello, everyone. And in this episode of the show, I am speaking with Christine Topham, and Christine is sharing her menopause story. I'm Tafika Kier, and this is the Mr. Menopause Show. Hello, Christine. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Yes, thank you for coming on. Thank you for uh, agreeing to share your story. Um, I've spoken to a lot of women over the past few weeks and and I've heard some really different stories. And I think it's really important for um, the audience to know and understand that their journey is gonna be completely different and that it's okay. And so I would really love to hear just what exactly your menopause story is. Well, my story started actually 33 years ago. Um, unfortunately I had a complication during childbirth and had to have an emergency hysterectomy. So at that time, 33 years ago, you know, there wasn't really much known about, uh, of course, uh, HRT therapy at all. And, um, what happened with me was, is that the doctor basically said, oh, don't worry, you still have your ovaries and tubes, you'll be fine, you'll still experience like symptoms of your normal menstruation, um, and everything will be fine, but it wasn't fine. Um, it changed radically. I had, um, after that, I went through, of course, I had a tra- very traumatic experience, but I went through some depression. I also had really no drive for intimacy after that. And um, I started having hot flashes early on and a lot of the side effects that go along with menopause. But I basically, I'm kind of one of those type of individuals where it's like, okay, I'm just going to push through it and everything's going to be fine. And it really wasn't. And I didn't realize how bad things were until other symptoms started appearing. For instance, um, I shortly thereafter, about within the first five or six years after the um, hysterectomy, I started having back pain, really bad back pain, fatigue, um, just feeling always kind of down and not motivated. And I've always been a go-getter. And basically what happened was, is that um, I was diagnosed at that point after going for years to doctors with fibromyalgia. So I have this budding career. I've moved from Las Vegas, Nevada to Georgia. And I have this career that I'm pursuing in real estate. And I just was struggling every day just to get through the day. I mean, it was especially with the when the weather got really damp. Also, my fibromyalgia would act up. I just kind of felt hopeless for mm-hmm. years and years and years. And um, I went from doctor to doctor, had tests. You know, was it rheumatoid arthritis? Was it this? Was it that? Nobody could figure it out. And then finally, when they diagnosed with fi- me with fibromyalgia, they started treating me with what was typical protocol back then, which was let's throw every kind of drug, antidepressants, um, pain medicine, you know, to try and see if something will work. And really some things worked a little bit, Mm -hmm. but nothing worked as a whole so that I had, um, so that I didn't have the pain that I was in constantly. Mm -hmm. Now back then, can I ask you back then, did they know it was menopause? Did they actually give you that diagnosis? Well, I, I, yes, I had the diagnosis as far as from my, originally from my doctor, because I had the hysterectomy. Okay. So, but he said that my tubes and my ovaries would still give me enough of the hormone, uh, hormones that I needed to be able to still, you know, function and, and that I would still have almost like the bloating that you have right before your, your menses and things like that. I had those symptoms, but I also had all these other host of symptoms. And I was the person that I hated to go to sleep at night because the day was so exciting. You know, I was exercising all the time. I lifted weights. I jumped rope with a team. I was as active as can be until all this happened. And so it sent me into this spiral of 
let's try this drug. Let's try this. You know, I kept pushing forward and saying, okay, I'm going to the gym today, but then I wouldn't have real recovery after exercise. I would like be so sore for days on end, or I'm going to go hiking. I'm going to go do this. But I, I always felt like defeated. Like I just couldn't grab my old self back. Mm -hmm. And I went on for that for years as a result of a lot of the drugs that I took, I gained weight. I was 45 pounds heavier than what I should have been. And I was always, you know, I'm tall and I carry my weight well, but I certainly wasn't <laughs> very happy with that, yeah. you know, and no matter what I did to try to diet or to eat properly, or I just, again, just felt like I kept trying and trying, but it was like, I got slammed down and slammed down and slammed down about, I had heard about hormone replacement therapy years ago from Suzanne Summers. I don't know if you remember who she yeah. was. She mm -hmm. was touting that and that it had been used in Europe for some 40 or 50 years. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. But that was, I probably heard about that 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so there was nothing out there you know, as far as doctors that were talking about it or, or anything as far as information about that back then. Eventually, what happened was um, about five years ago, I, I was at a, a, a class with some fellow agents and there was this one gal in there and she was just so bubbly and she had lost some weight and she looked great. And I went up to her and I said, Kim, what is going on with you? You look fabulous. What are you doing? And she told me about HRT. And so I decided to check into that. I was very open about it because of what I have had previously heard from Suzanne Summers. Mm -hmm. And um, I talked to my husband about it. And we decided to go down to one of the clinics and investigate, you know, what it was all about. Um, so that started my journey into using the pellet therapy and I have been using it steadily every three months um, getting an insertion and I can tell you it has changed my life mm -hmm. not too long ago I walked into a broker's office that I hadn't seen for years and years and he said to me Christine what are you doing you look so great mm -hmm. and I said I I'm just happy Mm -hmm. And he said, well, what's making you so happy? Because before I wasn't that way. I yeah. was pretty like, um, just kind of down. So, but you, you said this, this all began like 30 some odd years. So you've been, you had been struggling with all those symptoms for like 26 years. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Yep. Wow. And I've heard people, and it's interesting you say that because I've spoken with people and, and a lot of the studies even say that it can last for up to 10 years, but that's well beyond 10 years. So, so, and again, it just goes back to that whole thing about everybody's going to be different and everybody's going to have a different experience, whereas they're saying it can be up to 10 years and you're showing that it can be up to 20 or more years. Right. And it wasn't that doctors weren't throwing some things at me, like they put me on an estrogen patch at one time, mm -hmm. you know, and they tried different things, but nothing really worked. Some things worked a little bit, mm -hmm. but nothing worked as a whole completely. And it wasn't really until I got on the HRT therapy that I just felt like this whole sense of well-being mm -hmm. and energy again. Um, a zest for life again, because I was really just, I mean, I didn't want to do anything. Yeah, I got to that point where it's like, I don't want to go for walks. And I don't want to do this. Because again, I felt so defeated. But once I got on the, uh, on the replacement therapy, that that changed. I mean, I joined back the gym, I noticed that my mood was better. Mm -hmm. I mean, at one point, they, like I said, they had me on antidepressants, they had me on pain pills, all of that's gone. Oh, nice. And, and so I have, I have really good energy, and I have a zest for life again. And I'm, I'm just happy. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's my husband. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so tell me about that. So 20, 20 some odd years experiencing this, what kind of effect did that have on your relationship? 
it had a very negative effect. Fortunately, I have a husband who's a doll. Okay. He just is the most patient, kind man and understanding. Mm -hmm. Um, I couldn't be more blessed. However, you know, when it came to intimacy, I was like, I could care less. I had no drive. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I just, I mean, I forced myself, but it mm-hmm. wasn't like I was enjoying myself. Yeah. And he certainly, you know, and I just, it was like, oh, it w- just wasn't there. There yeah. wasn't a single thought in my mind about daydreaming about having a fun time. Yeah. You know, and then once I got on the therapy, it was like, I, I used to tell people, yeah, the best looking movie star could stand right in front of me, you know, flashing, ready to go. And I would have went, mm-hmm. nah, get out of here. Yeah. And now it was like, oh, I'm thinking about that again. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm wanting to have that intimacy again. Yeah. And um, and this is one of those symptoms that, again, that we say no one talks about, like that there's like vaginal issues that causes pain, dryness, all these that UTIs, other things that happen that, you know, who would want to, you know, have have intimacy at that point? And again, we goes back to, you know, if men were more part of the conversation, they could know these things and understand them a little better and, and have some kind of a, a empathy for it. You know what I mean? Whereas they may feel like you just don't love them anymore, that you're not attracted to them. Absolutely. And I certainly, I mean, I love my husband more than anything mm-hmm. in the world. We have a great marriage and we always have had. He fortunately has been very patient and understanding after he saw, you know, he was in the room the day that I had my, my child and the day that all of a sudden within two minutes flat, I mean, everything went, oh my gosh, slap her on the gurney, get her in there right now because I was on the brink of dying oh, wow. from, yeah, I had a rare complication, a placenta accreta. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I went into DIC which meant the blood was trying, you know, trying to clot and all that stuff. And it wouldn't anyway. So he was there. He saw that he, and he's been extremely patient and very Mm -hmm. accepting. However, you know, he was also very encouraging when I found out about this and started talking to him about it. He said, let's go check it out, you know, Mm -hmm. and we did. And, and actually at one point he actually was on a little bit of the HRT therapy also, Mm -hmm. So I think it's great for men too. Yeah, you yeah. Notice the difference. Yeah, it, it's interesting you say that because it, two things. Literally, like earlier this morning, I'm I'm actually writing a new episode that is all about managing menopause and relationships. And one of the things that I talk about is how. Um, there's not enough communication between both sexes about this because the females don't realize that men go through an andropause, which is very similar to menopause. Men get hot flashes, men get all these things. But I always say, just like women are talking to each other, you know, men are talking to each other, right? We're we're not like, I recently came out about the fact that I'm in andropause and I'm on hormone replacement therapy as well. And a big part of it was, um, I saw this show, you know, the big O did a show and one of the doctors on there had mentioned that men go through puberty and then they're set for the rest of their life. And I'm like, no, we're not. I'm like, you know, I'm like saying something like that to me just further separates us, makes it seem like we wouldn't understand. Whereas if you knew that we actually went through that, there would be more inclusion, you know, and I, and right. I, I keep pushing that because I think it's so important because if you, if your husband hadn't been with you through that process, you know, and some husbands there at work, they're not seeing any of this. They're not experienced. They just come home and see the, the aftermath of what you're going through. So again, he was more involved. Every woman that I've spoken to about this process that has been able to make it through and their relationships stay strong are women that spoke to their husbands about what was going on. Absolutely. Right? So it goes back to communication. It really does. And, and um, I'm very grateful for that, th- that he was willing to, to work through that. You know, I know some men are more uptight about it and women too. And I talk to women about it all the time. I mean, mm-hmm. I've been on an airplane with a total stranger <laughs> and two women just all of a sudden starting to talk and everything. And, and I will, if, if they're receptive, if I can see an open door to basically share that information, I will share it. 
Yeah. I want my broker. I, t- I said something to my broker the other day. I said, you know, you need to really have me come in and talk to all, because most realtors are women, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Talk to all these women about it. They're in their forties and fifties and stuff. And let me share this information because I am their biggest advocate. And mm-hmm. I, I will talk to anybody about it. If, if you'll open the door a little bit, <laughs> you might get more than you bargained for, but I'm going to share it. It's so important. It is important. It's so important. And why live life, you know, being miserable and, and feeling like defeated. Mm-hmm. I just. Uh... So tell me this. So, you know, um, all of the misinformation that has been out since what the early 2000s you know about mm-hmm. menopause uh, i'm sorry about hrt and mm-hmm. um you know remember there was this whole thing it causes cancer it does this like were, was there any fear of that when 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 hrt was brought to the table for you you know i i um didn't really a, a little bit the doctor had had me on estrogen patches before that, and I was still getting hot flashes. Mm-hmm. And um, then we tried, you know, we tried several different therapies, but I wasn't really concerned about it. After I had it, I started doing the first time I started doing more research about it, you know, and um, what I have read, what my experiences have been, have been, you know, that um you know, there's a, I believe there's an article out there. There's a 35% reduction in, in breast cancer for women when they're on HRT therapy. Um, and there's several studies out there and you just have to look them up, but I mean, it's very beneficial to the heart, the lungs, um, you know, your bones, especially, uh, and especially for women who have bone loss and things like mm-hmm. that. I've noticed one thing, I have the strongest nails since I've been, <laughs> I do, my nails are so strong. Mm-hmm. They used to just be thin, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, and I also can exercise more. I've been exercising steadily since I've been on this therapy. So I just feel better about myself and I, and I, and if you're willing to dive into a little bit of the research and, you know, with uh, the internet, you can certainly find whatever you want to find and you can read things that are negative too, but there's more positive out there. I believe. Well, well, I think the key thing that you said was read the research, not just listening to somebody on TikTok or on Instagram. It's actually getting the research. I I don't know how many ladies I've spoken to or like I'll put a post up and they'll say, what are you talking about? There's no research. I'm like, there is, I'm like, if you just type menopause research, you're going to get hundreds of thousands of pages come up. It's like, I'm like, what are you looking up? I'm like, you're probably just looking for an answer rather than looking for either someone that can actually help you or looking up the word research. You know what I mean? Because if you, like you said, look up the research and the research will come up, you know, some of the things you have to pay for, cause you have to be a member of the society or whatever, but right. there's tons of research out there. Yeah. There's enough out there that you can certainly come to your own decision about whether or not you want to give it a try Mm -hmm. and see if it works for you. Every person that I have recommended that went and got the um, pellet therapy with the exception of one, and I've probably recommended at least 30 women that have followed through with it, not counting all the other women that I've spoke to about it, that I don't know if they ever followed through. But I only had one that told me she had a little bit of a problem with it and Mm -hmm. she had to have the pellets removed. Mm -hmm. But then she had also a different anatomy than me. Exactly. Yeah, because I've had women that have come on that the only thing they're taking is testosterone. I have another woman that spoke about she's on four different things. It's like, again, everybody's chemistry is going to be different. The way your body responds is going to have to do with your age, your size, your activity, whether you have other metabolic conditions that you may be dealing with. So, yes, definitely uh, another thing from the big conversation where I don't know if you remember this. I brought this up in another conversation when Oprah was like, um, go get your first uh, a click and your life is going to change. It's like, well, not really. You might have to do some, you know, playing with things sure. until it gets better. You know, it's not going to, you know, for a lot of women, it's not going to be as easy as one click, but you know, it's just about finding what works best for your body chemistry. Right. And it's all in, it's all in making sure that they've done accurate testing. Mm-hmm. They know exactly what you're, what you need and, and the dosing, you know, it's mm-hmm. not, 
it's still a little bit, sometimes you have to tweak it a little bit. My first round, I had to go back and get a little extra. Okay. But ever since then, I've just been on the same dosing the entire time. Now you periodically have blood work done again so that, you know, and and, and I can tell, I can tell when my, I'm starting to run out, Mm -hmm. you know, towards the end of, uh, you know, that three or the fourth month, I start getting a little more tired. I'm a little more irritable. I Mm -hmm. am like, no, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I can relate with with my because I take a shot a, a shot of testosterone, and towards the end of the cycle, like before my next shot, I can feel the difference in my body as well. I can totally feel it. Like even like when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, uh, two more days. You know? Right. I know. You count the days down because you're like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready because it is. It's like a, a shot of enthusiasm and a and a shot of hey, I'm happy and I'm seizing life. And, you know, I mean, we're here for such a short time. Yeah. Yeah. We might as well enjoy the ride. Yeah, exactly. Totally agree. Yes, totally agree. Great. Well, if there was was anything that you would um, would like to leave some final words for anyone listening that either maybe on the fits or maybe struggling and not knowing what to do or, you know, or maybe they have tried different things and they feel like giving up, like, like, what's some encouragement that you could give them? I would probably say to them, be open minded you know, do your research, give it a try. You, you know, you don't know until you, you try that, what the full impact will be. Don't be afraid of all the negative out there. You know, it's not like, okay, it's not like if you have those inserts that all of a sudden, uh oh, it's going to be awful right off the bat. You might have some side effects and stuff, but I would say, you know, why not? You know, we all want to be, I mean, I think what's the biggest thing that most people want in life? Love and happiness. Mm-hmm. We want to be happy. Yeah. You know, why be miserable? Yeah. Miserable is easy to be. Yeah. You know, there's, <laughs> it is. It's easy to be. But being happy is a whole nother thing and 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 it it brings back that zest for me it brought back that zest for life that go out and seize it girl and Mm -hmm. you know do what you know face your fears do what you want to do you know you're bigger than a lot of these other problems and it helps me to work through those when I'm on the therapy so I would just say do your research and you know what have you got to lose yeah, yeah. And, and again, for, for, for some women out there, uh, it, it may not be the pellets. Maybe it's going to be, you know, the patch. Maybe, maybe the patch will work for them. Maybe it'll be the gel. Maybe you may just need testosterone. But the key is you won't know until, like you say, you give it a try. And again, you know, doing the research, working with someone who specializes in it, that Absolutely. knows what they're doing. Um, yeah, so great. Yeah, thank you and so a much. Doctor, and a doctor who's willing to listen. I'll tell you one thing that my doctor said when I had my hysterectomy that really bothered me. He went to my husband and he said, don't worry, Keith, you won't feel anything different. Wow. And and he didn't even say a thing to me about what I had left or what to expect. So there's that there's that male kind of sometimes attitude that still goes out there and, and that kind of diminishes, you know, our feelings about that. And they're very real. And you know, this basically helps put that all back together. Yeah. And was and what and I think the good thing now is that, you know, because clearly that happened so long ago is that I think now that, you know, women are speaking out more about it and saying speaking about like your experience with that doctor back then, that doctors aren't as flippant about it now. You know, they're actually are listening when women say, let's look into this and, you know, I'm feeling this. Um, another thing that a lot of the uh, previous women that I spoke about was like, if the doctor that you're with is not listening to you, you go to someone else absolutely absolutely because there is help out there and don't give up don't yeah. give up yeah, so very good. that's what we're here is to pay it all forward let's yeah. share it let's yes. spread the word and share it and pay it forward to to the whole world because yes. we deserve to have a happy life while we're here on this planet yes i agree and that's a great way to finish the episode thank you so much for coming on i appreciate you so much
Thank you too. I really appreciate the opportunity. I hope you have a fabulous rest of the year. You too. Take care, Christine. Thank you.